Face it, Rusky, we're lost. Well, stop worrying. I've traveled down this road many times. <sighs> Man, it's cold out here. Oh, don't be such a baby. I've survived three lush winters during the siege of Leningrad. <sighs> How much further to Helsinki? Eat motives. We need to find some shelter quickly. The sun's going down and the snowstorm's getting stronger. finally became fully independent from Russia after a long battle against Bolshevik volunteers who were sent to make Finland a puppet communist country. By 1920, Finland joined the League of Nations, two years later when the Great War ended. Wait a minute. You're telling me that we invaded a country that was part of the League of Nations? Yeah. Why? Because the government wanted to expand its borders from Leningrad for security reasons if Germany was ever to attack the Soviet Union, since the Soviets didn't trust Germany. An ultimatum was sent by the Soviets to the Finnish government for the request of changing the borders of Finland. Oh, so what would be next? Finland refused, and the Soviets sent four army groups to attack Finland and tried to establish a puppet communist government within the country. This aggressive act of war removed the Soviet Union from the League of Nations. No big deal. Huh. I never thought that Stalin would go this far to expand the borders of the Soviet Union. You thought that was bad? Things about to get even worse. With nearly a million Soviet soldiers backed up with thousands of tanks, planes, and other military hardware all ready to fight, the first signs of the Soviet aggression was near the village of Benoa. Soviet artillery fired near the small village on November 26, 1939, followed by a massive Soviet offense four days later on November 30th. This offense marked the start of the Winter War. The 7th, 8th, 9th, and 14th Soviet army groups were sent in to attack Finland and capture several small towns near the Finnish borders. The 7th army attacked from the southeastern part near Leningrad with nine divisions, a tank corps, and three tank brigades while the 8th Army attacked from the other side of Lake Ladoga with 6 divisions and a tank brigade. Up in the north, the 9th Army attacked the center part of Finland with 3 divisions along with an additional division on its way to cut Finland in half. Further up north is the 14th Army attacking Finland with 3 divisions to capture an Arctic port in Petsamo, and then advanced towards the town of Roviniemi. Finland's armies were small and didn't have the strength to fight against such a large army like the Red Army. The Army of Isthmus had six divisions which were split into two army corps groups to fight against the Soviet 7th Army Group on the Mannerheim Line. A 4th Army Corps Group was sent to fight against the 8th Army near Lake Ladoga, and up in the north was the North Finland Group, which was a collection of border guards, civic guards, and a group of reservists to hold off both the 9th and the 14th Army Groups. The Soviet battle plan was to use Germany's new tactic of Blitzkrieg after seeing numerous victories during the invasion of Poland. The Soviets were very impressed by this new tactic the Germans developed and decided to use it in the Winter War. 
However, the Soviets failed to realize that this tactic needed a many connected network of roads and requires early planning for it to be successful. Finland was in a very flat country and had very few roads, which limited the Soviets to certain attacks against the Finnish soldiers. Soviet tanks were limited to only driving on the very few dirt roads Finland had to offer and could not go off-road because of the many marshlands. Since it was the beginning of winter, the Finnish army used ski troopers and sleighs to get around the battlefield quickly. Unlike the Soviets who didn't have ski troopers, mobility was difficult because of the deep snow. Both nations supplied their armies with winter clothing, but the Soviets' clothing wasn't camouflaged very well. They wore all of drapes and stuck out so much it was easy for Finnish snipers like Simo Haiha, or also known as White Death, to kill many Soviet soldiers throughout the course of the war. However, the Soviets did achieve air superiority over Finland since the Finnish Air Force was very large. The Soviets did multiple bombing runs on many small towns and villages, including the capital city of Helsinki. But the bombings affected very little on Finland since the Soviets targeted the many Finnish railroads that were giving supplies to their soldiers on the front lines. And even if the Soviet bombers did hit the railroads, they would just be prepared in a matter of hours. Also in the Baltic Sea, naval combat was low due to the frozen ice around the coast of Finland. The Soviet Navy played more of a defensive role since it didn't have the capability of doing large-scale landing operations. I remember being there. I was created to destroy the bunkers the Finnish soldiers created near the Mannerheim line. The freezing cold of the coming winter made us very frigid. At night, the temperature would drop down to minus 40 degrees, and some of my comrades froze to death. We weren't supplied with proper shelters to keep us warm. We also couldn't move across snowy countryside because of the many bodies of water and the marshlands were very vast. That sounds very... chilling. It was. And it was also well worth it. Worth it? Yeah. It gave us better experience. Sure, if you don't count freezing to death in the bitter coldness of winter and getting your supply lines cut off by the Finnish soldiers. Still worth it. Of course it was. Although the Soviets were advancing further into Finland, the Finnish soldiers around the Mannerheim line and the many other defensive lines used both Monty and Gruel tactics which were to attack Soviet soldiers from all angles in small groups and create a pocket of Soviet troops, making it easy to fight against. These attacks made many Soviet supply lines moving to the front lines very difficult because of numerous Finnish ambushes attacking them, leaving many Soviet divisions without supplies for days. A good example of this was on January 1st, 1940 on the Rote Road when the Battle of Swama Salme was raging on. Many Soviet battalions were running low on supplies and the main supply route was the Rote Road to assist surrounded Soviet soldiers. But unknown to the Soviets, the Finnish soldiers set up roadblocks on the road and then ambushed the suppliers once they reached them. The Finnish army captured huge amounts of Soviet military hardware and the Battle of Suoma Salme ended in Finnish victory after they overran the pocketed Soviet troops. It then got to the Soviets that this war soon became a fight for survival. If a Soviet soldier retreated or wouldn't fire his rifle, they would be executed on the spot by an officer. Also, if they did try to run away from their trench line, they wouldn't get very far because they would freeze to death from the coldness of winter. And the Soviets couldn't surrender to the Finnish soldiers because the Soviets were brainwashed so bad by Soviet propaganda that the Finnish soldiers would torture prisoners of war to death. Clearly, the Soviets wanted to show no weakness to their country nor to their leaders. This was good for us. Excuse me? This winter war, it was good for our country. And why is that? It gave us dignity, that we would fight to the end for our country and for Stalin. It showed that we would not back down so easily. Sure. Clearly this guy isn't even heard about the Great Purge. Sorry, what was that? Uh, <clears throat> nothing. Uh, moving on. Between the months of January and February, trench warfare soon broke out between the two nations in the Karelian province. Peace talks soon broke out of Finland since their soldiers were getting overrun by the Soviets in the Karelian region, and after losing the Second Battle of Suma to the Soviets, their resources and soldiers were becoming exhausted. Also, Norway and Sweden refused to let British and French volunteer troops move across their countries to assist Finland up in the north because they wanted to stay neutral. With the Soviets breaking through the Mannerheim line, they weren't in a talking mood since they wanted all of Karelia and it wasn't until March 5th when the Soviets reached the outskirts of Vietapode, the Finns wanted an armistice. 
But again, the Soviets still weren't listening for a little bit until the Soviet government finally agreed to make peace talks with Finland in mid-March. The Soviet government demanded the Karelian region, the Sala region, the Rybiki Peninsula, the four islands in the Gulf of Finland, and the Honko Peninsula to be leased for 30 years for a Soviet naval base. Finland had to evacuate over 422,000 Karelian civilians across Finland's new border, and on March 12th, Finland signed the peace treaty and a ceasefire was placed. Even though the treaty was signed, Finland and the USSR still had hostilities against each other. And then in 1941, the peace treaty ended and the continuation war started with German forces fighting with the Finnish army against the Soviet Red Army to make more front lines near Leningrad. By 1944, Finland was losing the battle against the Soviets and wanted out of the war because of exhausted resources and troops. The Soviets demanded $300 million for war reparations. Also giving the Petsoma region, leasing another naval base in the Porkola area, weak alliance in the Communist Party of Finland because Finland was part of the anti comintern Pact, and banned any other parties who supported fascism in the country. Finland agreed and signed the peace treaty on September 19, 1944, and started the Lapland Wars, which was to remove all German forces out of Finland. So that was the Winter War, and a little bit of Finland's involvement in the Eastern Front. Yeah. That was great toxic, but why are we heading to Helsinki in the first place? To talk about the Winter War. But you just did it. Oh. Um. Huh. I don't know. You want to head back to Leningrad tomorrow morning? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to sleep now. I'll see you in the morning. Alright, good night then. I hope you all enjoyed this episode of the World War II Rant. Until next time, thank God. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like and share this episode. Also, if you want me to make more episodes, head over to my Patreon account and send a donation to help me make more episodes. For any suggestions for future episodes, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Also, subscribe to my channel and join my toxic army, and we'll take over the world together.